uh, I guess about the three and a half yard line. Yes, and Bryce Matthews of Clements, cornerback on the near side, lined up opposite Hampton Phillips is having a little fun with it and just, you know, just kind of helping the officials kind of take that ball back. Yeah. Here's the play now, third down and about 13. Abu being rushed, rolling to his left, trying to get out of the end zone. He is to the 5, the 10, and then he's pushed out of bounds at about the 11-yard line, maybe the 12. And he was made, he is able to make something out of absolutely nothing that time. And you know something else, a great play made by a photographer who looks like he's a Clement student. Yeah. He is able to do a quick pirouette and avoid getting his very nice camera with a very large lens and from the getting tripod. knocked out of his hand. He's got the tripod there too, and yeah, he saved the camera, and then uh, Austin's going for it. Fourth and five from their they're own <laughs> 12. Maybe they're trying to draw him offside here. You know, they snap it. Here's a boot being rushed downfield. Has the man open, and it's going to be a loso, but he's going to be tackled. Is he? Well, he's he still on his feet. He went down, and they blew it dead. <laughs> well... Oh, I guess they on. said his progress was stopped, and uh, Aloso was a little disgusted, but give credit to well, Clements. I, I'm disgusted for Aloso. <laughs> he should have been allowed to keep going. Seems he wasn't like down. They had one guy who grabbed one of his feet. He could have gotten away. Well, uh, uh, Bohovic was there originally making well, it's, these. It's not Bohovic's fault, no, no, but no, the I'm whistle just, just should I, not I have I just want to give him credit because he was able to get him or – you know, wrap them up there originally, and then, uh, like you said, he was still trying for yardage, but uh, the referee apparently said that he wasn't going anywhere. He was on his feet, but nonsense. Not, and Roger vehemently disagrees. Here's Kasuma again. And, oh, he was really hit that time. That was Weaver. Wow. That he Weaver, in. he's playing his guts out. He really came in hard, and one of those form tackles. Now, uh, Marillis is into the game for the Rangers. Are they going to keep Kasuma in as well? Looks like it. They're going to have two backs flanking the quarterback, Chenier. It is second down and 11 yards to go from the 14-yard line for the Rangers, who lead 37-21. to 21. This uh, seems like this whole fourth quarter, we've been watching it right in front of us on this side of the field, Roger. The ball's always on this side of the field. Here's a handoff, Marillis. He's up the middle, and he's... Fighting his way down there for about a four-yard gain. Three yards, maybe. Tackle on the play by Lotana Umi Izioki. That's easy for you to say. Well, if if he is ever injured in a game, I'm going to say Umi Izioki. Is he okay? Yeah. That's number six, Roger. Number six. And it was about player with jersey number eight. Third and seven for the Rangers, and it's at the 11-yard line. Chenier waits for the snap. Fakes it to Marillis. Into the end zone he goes. It's going to be incomplete as a diving attempt was made by Darnell. And their defender was all over him. That was Rolls. Hugh Rolls. That was a Rolls Royce of a play by Hugh. <laughs> Number seven for Roger. But he came so close to getting flagged. Uh, he did. I thought that maybe the flag would come up. But Darnell didn't come up barking about it at all. So maybe he didn't think so much. Much contact there. Now we do have our field goal attempt. It's going to be uh, Wong. It's going to be what, Roger? A 27-yarder? I'll give it 28. 28. Yes, it's going to be closer to the 28. Here's the uh, Chenier holding. Here's a snap. It's a good snap. The kick is up, and it's good. That's a great kick. Maybe a clinching kick for the Rangers. Take a break here. Rangers 40 and the Bulldogs 21. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. 
Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Back here at Hall Stadium, where the Rangers lead 40 to 21 as the homecoming queen, Alice, uh, Alice, let's see, Allison Wong, Wong has just kicked a 27 yard, 28 yard field goal to give the Rangers a three score lead, and she has had quite a quite a night. This is a homecoming to remember for all of them, but especially for her, she could be able to tell her kids and maybe some grandkids. The story of homecoming, which started on the football field. And the kick is sailed into the end zone as Kroon puts a leg into that one. Into the wind, a, a, a slight wind. And it's uh, eight and a half minutes to play here in the ball game. Let's see what the, rain, uh, the Bulldogs can do here. They've uh, had some success in this game with the offense, especially in the first half. Slowed down a little bit here in the second half, and Roger had made a good point in the last series. We hadn't seen Jamal Franklin the second half. Could have affected some of their play calling or their execution for sure, as he's one of their stars on offense. Abood now waits for the snap, and he's got Weaver to his left. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. He's got the snap being rushed, rolls back to his right. A little screen, oh my goodness, what a hit! Oh my! My, that is McGinnis. And I'm telling you, I don't know how Phillips' helmet stayed on. I mean, he jarred him. But he's back up. Phillips is back up. Give him some credit for showing some toughness as well on a two-yard loss on that pass play. Abood waits for the snap. He's got it. Fakes a pass. Now he's downfield. He goes. It's caught right at the first down marker. Uh, Espino has it, and let's see where they mark it. They're going to mark it just short. I thought he was at the 35, but apparently he's a yard short. Third and one. That hit by McGinnis. Whoa. One of that's those a, that makes you glad you're up here. That's like a Dick Buckus kind of hit. Here's the uh, handoff. Up the middle goes, is it Weaver? Yes, for a first down. He's got about five yards. Does anybody remember the name Dick? Buckus anymore. And that is tackle there by Griffin Ward. Right? Griffin Ward make the tackle at the 40. And the Bulldogs up to the line of scrimmage quick. Weaver is uh, just behind Abood here. 7.20 to play here in the ball game. Rangers playoff hopes are alive and well. Here's a snap a little bit high. Abood running for his life and now he's going to be tackled. He couldn't get away, he tried to spin out of it, but he couldn't come out of there, and number 39 made the sack. Do we have his name, or is it number 38? Is it Salazar? Number 38, San Xander Salazar. As Abood looked like he was gonna get away there, and he kinda, he has those shifty feet, but not that time as uh, Salazar was able to take him for about a 12-yard loss. Tough play now for the Bulldogs from their own 28. And here's the snap. Abood now rolling to his left. He's been rushed quite a bit here in the second half. He has not. I think the first half I had mentioned that he had, he's been, he had been getting a lot of time on his passing, but this half, he's been all over. He can't even get his feet set. And by the way, uh, it probably is not going to add up to a victory for the Austin Bulldogs, but think about what their defense has done in this second half. I think there have been three red zone trips by the Rangers where they've come away with a grand total of three points. That's a good point. And so that's why they're still in the game very marginally, but, you know, 19 points down with 6.22 to go. And a third and 22. That's uh, the, the task at hand here for the Bulldogs right now. They need a penalty to bail them out. Or a big play. Here comes a blitz. 
It's a long pass downfield. It's going to be off his fingertips. Oh, my goodness. That could have been a big play as uh, the receiver, Aloso, looked like he could have had that one. He we had a step on Jack Zhang. And That's really hard to say fast. Jack Zhang. <laughs> And if, if you he, know, it, it just, it was one of those kind of, uh, he slowed down if he had kept running at the speed at which he was running to get open, I think he would have been able to catch it and even keep going. I think he, well, I'm sure he thinks he should have had it. And if he would have caught it, he might have gone the distance. That I was think so. uh, quite a opportunity for him off his fingertips. We've seen quite a few passes go off fingertips here today kick is almost blocked the corner gets it out of there and uh patrick smith fields it at the 37 up the right sideline he's got a lot of room he's at the 40 30 25 he's gonna go all the way 10 5 touchdown that would be he fielded it at the 43 yard line would it be a 57 yard return i'm not sure where he got it's it it's a 60, 63 63 i 60, gave you a uh, wrong hand signal 63 yard return as he, re he received it at about the 37 and he just went up the sideline, and I don't think he was touched. Uh, if he was, it was very lightly. He ran up the sideline, made, made it one good cut at around the 15-yard line, 20-yard line, and he went the rest of the way, gliding into the end zone. Patrick Smith with a beautiful kickoff return, and the icing is definitely on the cake here, 46 to 21, and the extra point is is about ready to happen as one of the Rangers comes on late. But he's on in time. Here's the snap, good snap, and the kick is also good for Wong again. And it's 47-21. The Rangers feeling good on homecoming night. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. So your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with the one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12 31 21 Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. Well, Patrick, not so much of a blowout as I had to live through last night as Peyto beat Hightower 55 to seven, but uh, Clements has it well in hand at 47 to 21. And it just kind of ballooned here toward the end. It was fairly close for a long time. Here's the kickoff into the end zone for a touchback as Kroon knocks another one into the end zone and the Bulldogs will take over at their own 25 yard line. By the way, um, I noticed during warm-ups, I, I thought I saw Lyle Link kicking the football. You know, he's been uh, the punter and kicker for the Rangers. I guess he would have punted tonight, but the Rangers' offense has been so good, they haven't needed to punt. But uh, I noticed that he looks kind of like Jesse Plemons, the actor who played Landry Clark in the Friday Night Lights television series. Well, I can say I never really watched that series. So I wouldn't know what that fella looks like. Here's a handoff, fake, and Abood has it to the 25, 30, 35, and he's close to a first down. I think he's got the first down. He faked the handoff to Weaver, I believe, and then he held onto it, and he ran for about 11 yards for a first down. Good run by Abood. Had a lot of room over there to the left side. By the way, I want to thank our fine producer, Les Clary. He's uh, kind of juggling, you know. There's several announced teams he's working with, and he's updating scores, putting it on social networking, and making sure our sound is good. Thank you, Les, for everything you're doing. I will echo that. Always good to have somebody in the background helping us out. And a booed. Well, wow. he just threw that ball away. There was no, again, he didn't have much time, and I don't know if his receiver stopped or what happened there, but 
Uh, he threw it uh, over the head by about 20 yards. I guess it was a numbers thing. He saw his man Mason Cress over there and three navy blue jerseys and thought, you know what? Let's get rid of this, this thing. Let's just uh, airmail it. Yeah, he did airmail that one. Three receivers to the left and one to the right. It's Weaver in the backfield with a boot. He rolls to his right. Still rolling. Downfield he goes. Caught at about the 45-yard line. Going to be a little short of the first down, but it's Cress making the catch. Mason Cress. Look where they marked it. Uh, Roger, let's see. They marked it. It seems like they lost a couple yards on yeah, the mark. A little, they shorted him. Well, I tell you, he Dominic keep... Golemi made the tackle. And third and three now for the Bulldogs. Looks like it should have been third and one, but Abood <laughs> makes the pass. Re received over there at the 42 and over the 45 to the 46 for a first down, and that is Roll. Hugh, Hugh rolls, makes the catch. And he rolls to a first down. That's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Under five minutes to play here. Bulldogs trying to just get some more points on the board here. Hand off. That's Weaver. He's going to get about 10 yards on a good run to the right side. Beautiful hole by the lineman for the Bulldogs and Weaver. Got the legs churning for a good 11-yard gain. First down, Bulldogs not quitting here tonight. Go Lemmy made the tackle. If he hadn't, I think they would have gotten it into the red zone. Clock winds down to the four-minute mark. Abu back to pass. A little bit of time this time. And it looks like there was interference on that play, and there is. He was hit early. Yeah, Correct. they're going to get Titan Chanelak. Yeah, he was, uh, Cress had uh, turned. Ready to make the catch, and you could tell from up here he was hit early. No doubter that time, and it'll be first down. Bulldogs. Listen to that big sound from the Austin band all the way across the field and across the running track. Yep, both bands. They're uh, blowing their lungs out over there. Both bands have good sound. A lot of powerful, like you said, powerful brass. And they're dancing over there, whoever's left on that Austin side. There's a few fans over there trying to uh, back their team here. Despite the score, here's a Abu. Got a little bit of time, steps into it. Long, long field, has got a man open. He's hit again at the goal line, and there's a no doubter again. <laughs> and if this was the pros, it would be marked at the one yard line, but here it will not be marked at the one. Yeah, I don't be believe. 15-yard penalty and automatic first down, and I believe it is Bryce Matthews who was guilty of kind of well, given what in hockey you'd call it a hip check a or check, something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he It would have been a touchdown, I think, had he not been knocked down there. And uh, <laughs> maybe it was a good penalty uh, with that being said because I think he would have had six on that because it was a beautiful pass and he was open not to be or excuse me, but then only to be knocked down at the last moment. Ball to 20 yard line as uh, Austin has been benefit of a couple of uh, defensive penalties here. Here's Abood rolling to his right, looking, looking. Now he's being rushed. This time he does what you said, Roger. He threw it out of bounds. And I think that was a legal play. He went past the line of scrimmage. He was out of the pocket. And the good heads up play that time. <laughs> it was it was a blind pass. Yeah. <laughs> he was kind of doing a pirouette to get yeah. away from Fan and Cross yeah. and just kind of flung it. And I'm he kind of has a good gyroscope inside him uh -huh. that, that made sure he threw it in the right direction. And amazingly it came out as a spiral. It looked like it was still a spiral. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he did what he had to do to save the yardage there, and now it's second down and ten. They're trying to get some points on the board and at least make it look a little better. Here's a Bood. He's rushed out of the pocket to the 15, to the 11, to 12. Or it's 12 and then the 11. And he's close to a first down, but he's going to be short, I think. Well, let's see. Maybe he's got that first down. He's at the 11-yard line. It's real close. I'll bet they wave the sticks I down the field. I think they're going to wave the sticks. I think they – have they? No. I don't know. Oh, Roger. come on. Sure looks like he's there. They're calling. They usually give it to him Let's see when it's that close. Are they calling? Is it four, what down is it? Third down now and one yard to go or less than a yard. 
There's no way the guy with the down box is lined up with the yeah, football. It, it There's no way. It doesn't look right. Here's a boot now. He's going to go with a pass to the right side, and he slips and falls down. Uh. And he loses. Well, I think he lost a yard there. Yeah. Unfortunately for the Bulldogs. Now it's fourth down and two, and it should be second down and okay. 11. Aloso had it, and he, as he made his move, his feet slipped up out from under him, and he couldn't quite gather himself, so it's a fourth and two now for the Bulldogs. Man in motion to the left, Weaver, Abood being rushed, heavily rushed and sacked. Whoa, what a play by number 33, and, uh, oh boy, per Pereira? Ways of per Pereira. Pereira made a great play on it, and Abood could not spin his way out of that one. A loss of about 15 yards, and their last gasp effort for points on the board goes awry. And I would imagine that the Rangers will run the ball here, I would hope and think. Well, by the way, last night when I was in Katy watching Hightower get their butts handed to them by the mighty Peyto Panthers, here at Hall Stadium there was a, a very stunning result. The Willow Ridge Eagles lost to Houston Sterling. It doesn't put them out of the playoff picture, but I think they might be on the bubble now. Well, as I said, they were going to run the ball, and then before they do, they come out and pass. Patrick Smith has it, still moving around. He fumbled the ball, but out of bounds. I'm not quite sure of that play. By the way. Except uh, we have a new quarterback. Yeah, I guess it's that's Michael Kazamervis. That's why they passed. Give him a chance to make a play and... What's going on here? Uh, that whistle blows. It's, uh, got an Austin player down in the Clements bench, Clements he, bench area, but he bounced right back yeah, up. He, He's okay. Uh, he didn't ha want to be over there by that bench. It looks like uh, Martel Jones was the man who bounced up. And wouldn't you want to bounce up too when you're on the enemy sideline? Yeah, you don't want to be there. And now it looks Although like. Although I think that uh, Coach Darnell, oh, such I, a wonderful ethical man, it's just he a, would he would. Uh, make sure that none of his players uh, absolutely gave him the business. I'm absolutely sure of that. I wasn't making any implications there. Here is the fake handoff. Kazmervis keeps it. And he looks like he might have a first down or he's pretty close to that first down. And they're moving the markers, moving the sticks. And we're under two and a half to play. Rangers just uh, running the clock out here with this Big 26-point lead on homecoming. And it's going to be a happy one for the Clements Rangers. I would imagine the dance is tomorrow night. Uh, well, I'm not sure anymore what, what yeah, the plans they, always are. They don't are. have the dance the same night as the game I anymore. I wouldn't think so. Um, <laughs> they used to do that, though, well, when I, I was in school. When I was in school, it was always not. The, it was the next night, too. But um, anyway, here's a handoff. And it's going to be a run to about the 40, a three-yard gain. And I think it's a new runner. I want to try to get his number here. I think it was a, looked like it was a number 11. Number 10. Number 10. Mongonia. That was, no. that's oh, Avery Clark. Clark. Play, Avery, Avery Clark. <laughs> yeah, and he's showing uh, he's down for the cause uh, with yep. it being Breast Cancer Awareness Gunner. Month. And he's got his, his pink T-shirt that goes well down below his waist yep. coming he's, out of the jersey. It's like he's got a thick pink belt on. <laughs> Here's the uh, girdle. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Third, second down at seven. Clark's going to get another handoff, and he's going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. And a good play <laughs> by the person we mentioned earlier, uh, Martel Jones. He made a real good wrap-up tackle, okay. and he got a couple of Bulldogs helping him out there. But uh, that's going to be a loss of it looks like two yards. Under a minute to play. Some, for some reason, the clock has stopped, and a flag comes flying. The referee's talking to somebody there for the Bulldogs. What do we got here? Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bulldogs. I don't know really what happened there. Roger, I don't think either one of us saw what happened. I do know that number 79 is coming off the field. Victor Phillip. By the way, just wanted to give uh, one score that is of interest, actually two. Uh, Angleton beat... Foster tonight, 26-25. That Whoa. could possible, possibly bump Foster out of the playoff picture. Maybe, maybe not. But it could be damaging to their hopes. And the Kepner Cougars, uh, they're just glad that they're done with the really killer opponents that they face in their district 
They lose tonight 70 to 14 to the Manville Mavericks. I tell you what, um, growing up, maybe I played in, in a different type of football or whatever, but I just don't ever remember teams scoring 70 points. I mean, when I, I just, it just didn't happen. We just, uh, I don't know if teams were more evenly matched or what, but boy, we've had a lot of, we had a couple of scores, 68 nothing, 63 to nothing, 70 to 14. Boy, that's a lot of points. One thing, Patrick, uh, this may not have been true in Wisconsin where you grew up, although it might have been because you had the Big Ten influence of Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler type offenses where they ran the ball a lot. When I was growing up in the state of Texas, uh, Texas wasn't known for passing offenses in high school football. They ran the veer and the wishbone, yeah, you I, know, the option. I think that's part of the part of the answer to what I'm saying as they march off some more yardage. I don't know if they got another. Oh, boy. Looks like they got about a 30-yard penalty here, and I just wish, I would hope they would just take a knee here. I think it's time to, some of the guys are getting a little bit uh, feisty out there, and the Bulldogs kind of lost a little bit of composure, it looks like. Now they are in victory formation, Roger. Oh, boy. Thank and there it is. Thank goodness. Snap, that should be the last one. Because I, I don't think they need to put that play clock on. They do look at <laughs> the play clock. It now, well, okay. They started it, so this, now that's it. Now we're good. Yeah, we don't have good. to do Line it again. Up. Line them up. Well, the, the Rangers did what they had to do tonight. They they took a, 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 a an early hit from the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs came out with a lot of energy. But the Rangers did a good job of holding their composure, and then pretty much from the second quarter on, really kind of were in control. The final score, 47 to 21 on homecoming night for the Rangers. And, Roger, I know you have some things to wrap this thing up. Well, I just want to say that, um, you know, it's eight years that I've been covering full football seasons, and the Clements Rangers uh, have fought hard every year. They always give great effort, but they've had some lean years to suffer through. And it's, it's just wonderful to see what they've been able to do this year because through eight games, they're 6-2. and two. Well, They're in good shape for a playoff game. And here on homecoming night, their very active and loyal alumni base comes back and they are treated to a big win. Well said, Roger. And I think on the other side, the Bulldogs are, are hoping for the same type of turnaround sometime soon. Yeah, it's, it's going to be... A tough more, a couple more weeks for the Bulldogs, and hopefully they can get a win. I'm, I'm not sure if they'll be able to, but, uh, you know, you just got to hopefully shake this out of your memory or, or maybe even better yet, remember it and let it drive you to make sure that you don't have a year like this again. So brighter days will be ahead eventually for Mike Arabonlo and his Bulldogs. But uh, Clements, uh, you know, they... The Rangers know what it's like to be in that situation. They've gone into their final week of the season sometimes uh, still looking for a win. So uh, Bobby Darnell has persevered uh, and, and uh, has built his program up, and they're looking good. So uh, for Patrick Kinnick, for everybody on the Vibe team, we thank you so much for being with us. Our final score, Clements defeats Austin by a score of 47-21. to 21. And we invite you to join James Kovaleski and me tomorrow as we'll come your way at 12.45 p.m. from Freedom Field in Alvin as Ridgepoint takes on Elkins. And then after that game is over, James and I will uh, drive over here like a bat out of you-know-where in our separate cars. And we'll bring you the game between the Travis Tigers and the Dulles Vikings in our nightcap that will kick off at 6 p.m. So goodbye, everybody, and God bless, and we will talk to you tomorrow.